Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. This is going to be the start of a conversion of this Hammond AO43 amplifier into a guitar amp. Uh, so if you're interested in that, go ahead and stick around and let's dive right in. All right, so taking a look at the state of this organ amplifier, uh, this thing has already been tinkered with a little bit. It belongs to my cousin. He uh, did some experimenting. I think he did, it, it functioned, but uh, it was not maybe perhaps ideal or sounding its very best. So uh, we, I plan on taking this thing to a new level. We're gonna do, replace a lot of the components, but use a lot of it as well as we can. Kind of in, in similar fashion to what I've done in the past. I really think these Hammond organs are excellent bass lines for amplifiers. If you can pick one up for cheap, I think they're awesome. A lot of the times the tube complement is very easy to transfer to a guitar amp, so in the vintage tubes often are really good, so if you can find one with tubes in it, that's awesome. Even if you can't, the chassis and the transformers are usually excellent and are very, very workable, and that in and of itself can a lot of times get you two or $300 into a project for a lot less when you get the Hammond set up. So, uh, you know, I would highly recommend it. This one's in pretty clean condition. You can see here it says the AO, uh, I believe this is H-AO, dash 43 dash one uh, it's got 117 volt primary at 60 hertz so uh, that's all pretty excellent you can see it already has a IEC power cord which is a replacement from the old power cord um, you can see it also does have a gain adjust here knob which looks like a pedal knob that's been applied to this front uh, we've got some I think these are RCA inputs, and then this looks like a quarter inch input like for a guitar, and it's kind of located right by what looks to be this V1 tube, so I definitely think this was probably the input that has been retroactively applied, and then another RCA in. Um, the transformers look very, very clean, excellent condition. The size of this chassis is also really good for guitar. Uh, I've worked with the AO29 in the past, which I would say that chassis is a little bit uh, wider left to right and it's also very shallow front to back which makes it kind of an odd size and it makes it difficult um, and as we flip it over and look on the inside you can see on this one uh, there's there's room here for a circuit board but also for the pot or the the, the controls or the um, tube sockets so it's 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 a really nice setup I think this chassis is going to make for an excellent little amplifier you can see the marking on top of the power transformer AO-42 I'm sorry AO-24157-1 549-6450 uh, that doesn't really mean anything to me uh, then we've got a pretty nice looking output transformer right there um, I think that's gonna probably sound quite good then for a tube complement I'm not sure how well you guys are gonna be able to see it but this has a marking of a 5U4 so this would have been the tube rectifier We've got two 6BQ5s, which are EL84 output tubes. Then it's got um, two 12AX7 9-pin uh, tube slots right here, tube sockets, and then a 12BH7 tube socket right there. So a really nice complement of five 9-pin um, tube sockets. So I think this is going to work great. Uh, for a, you could probably use a 5U4 or we could definitely also use a solid state rectifier and these two EL84 slots are going to be awesome and we have probably do two or maybe three 12AX7s here on the preamp side. Over here you can see this wobbly looking capacitor that probably will come out. Uh, I tend to be somewhat uh, judicious in taking out old capacitors. Then this, I'm not sure what this is, some kind of transformer. Um, I know with these old Hammond organs, they had weird inputs that weren't like guitar inputs, so sometimes you would need a transformer on the front end. Doesn't seem like a filter choke, uh, but it could be. I'm guessing it's some kind of transformer that was on the input side. Then we've got two really large uh, cap cans here on this right side. These guys are pretty beefy. 50 microfarad at 450 volts. It's a twofer. And uh, this one is as well. 
Yeah, 50 microfarad at 450 volts. So those are probably going to come out as well. Um, now looking a little bit further at this output transformer, I can see some marking AO245, I'm sorry, 241580, um, 5246441. So if that helps anyone out there, those markings don't mean much to me. But um, I think this is going to make for an excellent little guitar amp. You know, the setup running dual EL84s is a really nice bass line. And I think these AO43s are pretty well known for that. So, um, yeah, let's take a little more look at the inside of the amp. All right, now we can see most of the inside of the amp. Now, this definitely has been tinkered with. Um, you can see here's that quarter inch input jack and some of the circuitry has been kind of messed around with. Also note here over on the right side the power supply um, has definitely been messed with. Um, and then I think this is the out what would be the output jack. Yeah it looks like it's taken a wire from somewhere over here which probably is the output transformer. Um, but a lot of these these look at these crazy big old resistors these things are kind of wild don't see a lot of those some really nice terminal strips here to work with which is going to be great um, also really interested in this circuit board with all my uh, builds I've either done like a eyelet board or a turret board or I've more recently really gotten into point-to-point -point wiring which I really enjoy building with but this circuit board is really interesting to me. It's uh, got bolted here and here to the chassis, so it's nice and sturdy. There's very good clearance on the bottom side, and my, it's just situated really perfectly. So I think depending on how we end up wanting to do this, as far as where we put the controls, I think that's probably going to be the big question mark. Um, that We got the tube sockets here on the top. I don't know, I'm just very curious uh, about potentially reusing this little circuit board. Um, I, I think it could work really nicely. I'm probably going to take out the caps and even the resistors just for the purpose of accuracy and modernizing it and put it, making this thing good to go. I know the player that will be owning it in the future is, is somebody that's going to want to play it, hopefully in a live situation if we ever get back to that. Um, but a lot of potential here. Alright guys, as I've been taking the amp apart, so to speak, to get it ready for the new wiring, I wanted to make a couple of observations and comments. This is a really interesting project to take a look at basically an amp built by somebody else and maybe to try to learn a little bit from some of their techniques. So, first thing I wanted to comment on is this component board here. These little eyelets are really interesting. Um, the thing that's interesting about them is I don't know how well you can see it, but they actually are these little, they're not eyelets, they're kind of little cones, little medical metal cones, and this solder it just sits inside. So it, it actually is kind of an interesting type of component board to work on. Um, it actually is, is fairly easy to get components installed in and out. 
you really just have to heat up this outer terminal and the components lift out very easily. So, you know, compared to kind of an eyelet board or a turret board, this one actually works very well. And I think it's uh, overall a pretty solid little design. Uh, the second observation I've made is with all the tube socket connections, uh, the wire is almost, this is like a resistor that I pulled. You can see I had to, um, all the wires, they go into the socket hole and then they do a little J hook and then are crimped actually in place, which is kind of interesting. You know, they don't just necessarily have um, kind of straight wire that goes into the hole and it's kind of loosely laid on and soldered in place. It actually is making, you know, like a physical mechanical connection. And then the solder is, is cementing it in place. Makes it a little bit annoying to work on because if they crimp it a little bit too tightly, um, it's a little challenging to kind of, I gotta unbend that lead before I can remove the component. But, you know, I think it's always interesting how do you kind of weigh the pros and cons of making the connection really firm and secure and permanent versus um, something that's easy to work on that you can get the component in and out of. Also, want to comment these tube sockets are pretty interesting. Oh, you can see, but they've got these little metal tabs around the outside, which are connected to this to the chassis. You know, because these are riveted in place, so they've got all these little ground tabs, which I think are kind of interesting. Now, on the flip side, though, I wonder if that maybe is not the best because it has the potential to create some ground loops or you kind of have kind of a mishmashing of ground and I'll probably talk more at length about the kind of grounding system that I implement. Um, ground can actually get surprisingly complicated but just interesting to see how they've implemented ground and are aided with the choices they made with these tube sockets but it does make it kind of interesting because you certainly have the capability of um, grouping everything related to this tube socket right on it. So I, I do think, kind of appreciate that. And, and to be honest, these sockets as a whole are, are fairly robust, and I think they're going to work really well. I don't see any parts of it that seem to be aging or dying out. Next comment I wanted to make is you can see there's some of these brown wires. Um, this is actually the filament winding. And what you don't see is a tightly twisted pair. So interesting how I think some of the amp building logic that I have learned more recently is that you really want to keep a tightly twisted pair of filament wires, and you don't see that in this old amp. Uh, so it could have potentially been a little bit prone to some noise. But, you know, who knows how I mean, they made a bunch of these amps and they were all successful. Um, other thing I wanted to note, um, whoever had tinkered in this previously, uh, we do have a three-prong power cord. You can see this middle green lug is tied here to this leg of the chassis, which is good. Um, but there does not actually appear to be, these two black wires are the, the primaries of the out power transformer. So there does not appear to be either a power switch nor a fuse. So certainly a safety thing there that we would want to potentially address and fix. And the last thing I want to comment on is I think it's important to uh, identify what these, when, when some of these components that I'm going to be reusing. So, for example, these are the two wires coming from the, the choke, and then also the output transformer and power transformer. It's, it's really important that I, as, as you're going through this process, that you identify. You know, for example, this green leg is going to pin one. I'm sorry, this, this green lead looks actually maybe is going to ground. Um, this brown leg is going to pin uh, 7. And this, that also appears to have a big resistor on it. But anyways, I'm going to go through and document exactly all these wires. You know, there's, a, there's a couple red ones over here. So all the wires that are related to the transformers, you really want to identify them, um, label them. And I usually take a piece of masking tape and I write on the masking tape what it does because it's easy to kind of keep loose track of that. Alright, as you guys can see here, I've got the chassis pretty much cleared out of all of the components. We've left the circuit board. I had a little bit of difficulty 
with some of the process. One of these turret strips here uh, was kind of broken apart. This guy right here was broken in half, so that one is, I had to kind of tear away some of that. These terminal strips are excellent. This board is still going to be solid. Uh, the only other problem I had was with some of these tube sockets. Uh, this tube socket in particular is one for the one of the power tubes in this ter this little terminal tab uh, actually snapped off. It was a little bit brittle and I was maybe being a little too hard on it. But other than that, uh, things are looking really good. Now, the next thing I'm thinking about is getting kind of the exterior drill for any of the holes or whatnot that I'm going to need. So if we zoom out a second and take a look at the exterior of the amp, uh, I think this side is a lot cleaner and more of a blank canvas, so to speak. Uh, you know, I could really foresee that we would, you know, we got our, some more input side over here, rectifier and output tubes over here, you know, input jack right here, running kind of straight to this tube, might work kind of nice. Um, we've also, on this back side, I've got our, our power jack here, we've got a nice spot here for a speaker out, so um, you can kind of hide some of those pre-drilled stuff. Uh, but, the only issue we're going to have here on this front end is... This is where our circuit board is bolted, and it's right in the front. So, you know, for example, if I had a pod here, um, I could mount it in here like this, but it would probably be coming through about here. So it might look a little funky to not have it. You probably really want these pots being centered. And if I center the pot, it's it's really centered here on this board. I mean, it's gonna. I mean, so I can't really. I can put them here. But now we're kind of getting over onto this power side. So, I don't know, I just have some decisions to make about where I want to include things. I mean, I'm probably going to need to put my on-off switch here and my pilot light. Maybe try to get the fuse over here in the back. That could maybe work. Um, and then, you know, maybe have my two controls. I think I've got a volume and tone right here. Could potentially work. Um... So yeah, just kind of trying to think through how I'm going to lay out this circuit. So let's uh, keep moving forward. All right, guys, this is how I wind my filaments. I've got two wires here, red and a blue. I've done a little bit of twisting over on this side, and I've hooked it up against a screwdriver, which is hanging on my wall. And now I've got a cordless drill. And I'm going to take these other two leads, insert them into the chuck, which is empty, and I'm going to tighten it so that it kind of grabs onto the two wires as if they were the the bit that I was using. And then I'm just going, once it gets tight, I'm going to pull it taut and I'm just going to slowly activate my screwdriver and give it a little bit. There we go. Now we've got a tightly twisted pair of filament wires that are ready to install. Piece of cake. All right, guys, the amp is wired up. I haven't done any testing yet, but I wanted to walk through what I did. Initially, I started with a schematic that I hand drew. I ended up making a lot of changes as I'll go through. They're all penciled in, but that at least gave me a starting point, a roadmap to work off of. and. The, um, you know, I kind of look at amp building a little bit as partly an art and partly a science. And when I get in there and start wiring things up, I do have a little bit of a tendency to get a little bit creative. So I don't always follow my schematics to the T, but I do want to walk through this a little bit. Now I have no idea what kind of wiring setup you would call this. I mean, technically I do have this kind of weird component board that I'm using, but really it's I mean, I basically looked at it like kind of a more of a point-to-point -point wiring setup. Um, ultimately, I don't know if it really matters, but I do want to walk through it a little bit. So we're actually going to walk through every connection and just show how I laid everything out and how the circuit is working. So let's start with the power supply. All right, now this is my IEC power receptacle. Now the, the it kind of has like a, a flat bottom, which is that way, and then closer towards you is kind of the curved part. So this top middle lug is my safety earth, and I actually do have a, um, 
solder this green wire directly to this crimp terminal which is bolted directly to the chassis and this is there's no other connection relying on this so this is specifically for the safety earth okay then the uh, hot wire is coming off of this lead and that's carrying the, the 120 volts from the wall going into a fuse into a switch into the the switch is actually down here uh, into the power transformer and then the power transformer completes the circuit there to the voltage so that's how the 120 volts comes in to the amp then we move um, we've got a number of different connections coming out of our power transformer this is our tube rectifier so uh, we've got these yellow wires going to pins 2 and 8 I believe that's the cathodes that's giving the 5 volt circuit and then the high voltage B plus are on these uh, pins 4 and 6 on these red wires now I also have done something kind of weird my 6.3 volt filament winding I'm using pins 5 and 7 which are unused so I'm basically using these as terminal strips and you can see the blue and red wires goes outwards that's my 6.3 volt filament winding so a little bit of an abnormal thing there but I figured why not you've got these unused terminal I still have two more um, that I could potentially use if I was so inclined but I actually have no reason why it wouldn't work uh, this amp is designed to work with a 5Y3 rectifier tube and so um, it will only work one way and with that tube it'll work fine so uh, I think it should be okay okay so coming off of pin 8 right here this is our first node of our B plus step down circuit we've got four 27 microfarad at 450 volt filter capacitors and they're going to provide all of our filtering off of this first node I send this yellow wire this direction which is going to eventually tie in with the uh, first B plus node that's going to my power transformer to the center tap I'm sorry to the output transformer center tap then we also have coming off of that node is this blue wire is going out to my choke that came with the amp this tab right here is my universal ground for the power section so all my power amp power section connections are tying in here and are routed to ground via this bolt next this next tab you can see the red wires coming in from the choke okay providing voltage to this point we've got another filter cap and then you've got this yellow wire which uh, ties in over here and this is going to the screen grids of the uh, EL84 power tubes and then we've also got a 10k dropping resistor going here to this node this node has another filter cap tied to it and it is going over here uh, to this switch this is one of the things I'm going to experiment with I actually have a switch between a 4.7k resistor and a 22k resistor and the idea is that at 4.7k there's going to obviously going to be a lot higher voltage that's going to feed this is ultimately going to go to the plates of the preamp tube uh, so because also at this stage we're also sending a node out which is going um, that's actually coming from right here this node is going over to right here which is our uh, phase inverter so that leaves just one uh, one B plus step down left which is where the switch comes in so with 4.7 K resistor there's going to be higher voltage with 22 K obviously there's going to be lower voltage and I think that'll be fun to play around with 12x7s are pretty flexible and robust in terms of how you bias them with their with the plate voltage that you apply so I think it actually should work completely fine um, and then that comes back into here which I'm using as a terminal strip point that's connecting right here to this last filter cap to ground and then this yellow wire is sending our plate voltage over here so that's our B plus step down circuit and is really the the lifeblood of the amplifier okay moving in where we've got two EL84s one here one here they are in cathode bias you can see I've got a 25 microfarad 50 volt bypass cap and right now I've got a 250 ohm 5 watt power resistor um, that I may value may be too high but both of the cathodes are going to this node um, they're feeding in via these red wires and then they're connecting here and then this is actually connecting to ground at that universal ground point um, I'm using 100 ohm uh, I'm sorry these are actually 470 ohm screen resistors to drop the voltage just a little bit from the place to the screens these are two points 
2.7K grid, grid stopping resistors right here. And then I've also got right here, we've got uh, 220K grid leak resistors that are tying to ground. So that's the same ground point as the uh, cathodes. Now, moving over a little bit further, this right here is our phase inverter tube. Um, pretty simple, straightforward setup here. We're just using a long tail pair phase inverter. Uh, we've got voltage coming in from this yellow wire right here. This is our high voltage line. I'm running in a 91K and a 100K resistor, so a little bit of an imbalance there to hopefully balance things because the, just the nature of the long tail pair, you do need a little bit of imbalance on the plate voltage. Um, other than that, we're just using a standard fender setup. Um, I do have this little node uh, right here where I am gonna probably use some negative feedback. So I've got the option to do that right here. Um, I will be sending some negative feedback to that point. Um, but other than that, just a very standard long tail pair phase inverter. Um, this capacitor right here is the entrance point to the phase inverter. This is a uh, 0.022 UF filter cap or a coupling cap that's uh, sending out from uh, this previous stage, which is coming here. Uh, to the volume control. So this is where we're getting into um, the, these, uh, these controls. This is my volume control. This is the tone control. I'm actually using a moonlight tone control, which I got off of, uh, if you do it, I'll, I'll provide a link down in the description below where you can find that. But we So this is our last gain stage. This is the first 12AX7, and I'm running both of these in parallel. It might be easiest to start at the beginning on this. You can see I've got this green wire comes to here, I've got a one meg resistor going here to my preamp ground point. So I had a power amp ground over the other side. The preamp ground is right here on the input jack. So all my preamp grounds are at this point going to the input jack. Here's our one meg uh, setting the input impedance. I've got a 20K grid uh, stopping resistor that's going right here that's sending into both of the grids. So that's both pins two and pin seven of this because everything's running in parallel. Uh, running a 220K plate resistor. That's gonna help set the voltage to, to this gain stage. Then I'm running a 1.5K resistor, which is actually being split across both. So I believe that actually doubles it as if you're running 3K for each individually. And then I've got a 25, actually I think this is a 10, well, actually now I think about it, I believe this is a 0.68 microfarad cathode bypass cap that I'm actually running on this black wire down here to this switch. And I'll, one side of the switch is blank, so that lifts it out. And the other side of the switch, it actually connects it to ground. So um, that is a pretty, you know, as far as the switching goes, I really like the setup I've got. So basically I've got a cathode bias capacitor switch here for a boost. We got volume, we got tone. This is gonna be negative feedback control, which I'll come to more later. And this is kind of our power scaling uh, resistor. Um, and then that all gets sent out right up here to this 8 ohm output jack. So that is the wiring setup I'm going with. Uh, now we've got it all wired up. I'm gonna do a once over just to make sure there's anything I've missed and we'll start some startup procedures. All right guys, let's talk startup procedures. I think the amp is in a good spot. I'm ready to start up. What do I do next? Uh, first of all, you need a light bulb current limiter. That's this guy. This goes in line. This is the power cord to the amp. The light bulb current limiter plugs into the wall outlet. This helps keep things safe. If there's a short or there's a problem, this bulb will illuminate extremely brightly and it's basically absorbing the short rather than destroying something in the amp. So this is critical. If you need to know how to make this, I'll leave a link down in the comments below on how you can put one together. It's very easy, very straightforward, and it's super critical and essential. Next, I've got a multimeter. I've got one end clipped to ground. And on the other end, I'm just gonna take a look and see if I can confirm um, where my voltages are. So right there, now my house actually has weird voltage. This is a 70, 72 volts of alternating current from the wall. I think it's because I've got like a, um, kind of a weird, uh, and this is 47 volts on the other side. To be honest with you, I don't, know why my house is wired like that. Maybe there's like an elevated ground. If anybody knows why that is, please let me know. But you should probably be getting 120 volts of AC from there. Um, but from there, I, I'm not so much concerned about that. What I am concerned about is I wanna see what's going on on the other side 
of my amplifier. So um, let's go ahead and take a closer look at what we need to see. Now, if I can get a good look at it. Okay, there's my rectifier tube right there. Now, I don't have a tube installed, but I just wanna see, basically, I'm trying to track the voltage through the power supply. So, um, let's take a look. Let's start here on pin, I believe that's pin four. Okay, it's obviously not working because I don't have a fuse installed. Let's install a fuse and come back and try it again. Okay, I've got my fuse installed now. Let's go ahead and try this thing. Now it looks like we're at 330 volts of AC. That looks fine. Let's see how we should have 3.6. That's perfect. That's my filament supply. There's our 330, and then I think there should be 5 volts coming into my cathodes there. Yep, there's 5.7 volts on the cathode. Now that one feeds out, I'm not sure what's going on there, but uh, so far so good. Everything on my rectifier looks good to go. So I'm going to turn it off. We're going to put a rectifier tube in and keep moving forward. Okay, big change now. I've actually added a speaker load. And I've also got two EL84s installed. Let's try it. Just watching the tubes to see if they light up. It looks fine. You can see my voltage is a lot lower. Down about 215 and it's diving. Down about 205. Seems to be settling a little bit. Again, the light bulb current limiter is going to be absorbing some of that. This is the second node. Looks like it's reading 202 volts. Okay, I don't see anything that's causing me any concern. Let's try this uh, phase inverter node. There is no phase inverter there tube there. So that's not 201 volts. But so far, nothing's blown up. Our last node is at 202. Okay, I've got 12x7s installed. We're still using the light bulb current limiter. I've got my uh, node here, my, my multimeter reading DC volts. It's checking the node that should be going to one of those 12x7s. So if we flip it on, you can see our light bulb current limiter eliminates, but then appears to be going down. My voltage is going up. We're up at about 300 volts right now, climbing. I'm watching the amp, looking for smoke, listening for things. The voltage is coming down now. Seems now that the tubes are warming up. I'm not 100% certain that I'm not hearing signal coming out of that speaker.
turning the volume control. Does seem to be doing something. Let's check my, we're getting 175 volts right there. Let's check the last node. 171, if I flip my little switch, goes down to 163. So hey, that, that seems to be working as intended. Nice. Nothing's, seems to be a problem. All right. So next, I mean, the next step would be to take it off the label Kermit limiter and try plugging in a guitar. All right, the amp is now plugged directly in. We're gonna turn it on. See what happens. I got my multimeter on my last node. We're up to over 400. No sound yet. Settling down at 320 volts. All right, uh, I've powered on. I get a little bit of sound. But the amp is extremely quiet. So I started taking some voltages and you can see here I've got 28.9 volts. This is reading on the plates of the V1 plates of both. So this this blue wire right here feeds on, it comes from a 220K plate resistor feeding both pins. Uh, let's take a look, pins one and six. So my plate voltage is extremely low. Um, I'm uncertain if I have goofed up something. Um, I checked I had ground on the other side of my cathode bias wire, so I'm not sure why my plate voltage is so low. I'm not sure, maybe it's because I'm running the two gain stages in parallel. I guess we will maybe try lifting one of those blue wires out, see what happens. Uh, maybe I'll take it to the forum too with a question. So, little snafu on startup. Well, I pretty quickly found my ear. I'm not sure if you guys are going to be able to tell this or not, but. This black wire is my cathode. It should be going to pins 3 and then 6, 7, 8. You can see right here it's actually connected to pin 7. And then my what should be my grid on this side is connected to pin 8. So I need to flip those wires around. Doop, doop, doop. Alright guys, I got something to show you. This is the AO43 conversion. It is a pretty unique circuit at this point some kind of matchless Dr. Z who knows what at this point something that I've come up with and uh, been dialing in the tones and I gotta say this thing really sings I'm thrilled with where it has gotten to still have some more tweaking to go not done yet but uh, got a lot of exciting tone shaping capability in this amp uh, very simple and straightforward amplifier. We've got a single 12AX7 input gain stage. It's actually running into both triodes in parallel on the input, which gives it a little bit of a thicker, fatter tone. Running into a long tail pair phase inverter. The preamp is dead simple. We've got a cathode bypass capacitor switch. Uh, the cathode bypass cap is 0.68 microfarad, which gives it definitely trims some of the low end frequencies, so more of a mid range and treble boost and definitely a gain boost. Volume, tone. The tone is pulled from a Car Dr. Z Carmen Ghia. So it actually, I think of it more of as a thickness control. When you go all the way this way, it's very thin and very bright. And as you roll it up, it gets thicker and fatter. And all the way on this side, it's very, very thick and fat. Um, phase inverter, two EL84 power tubes, a 5Y3 tube rectifier. For power switching, um, I've got a negative feedback control, which I think is awesome. And then I've got a bright switch on the volume pot. So uh, really thrilled with how this thing came out. This is a very pure and straightforward tube tone machine. Hope you guys enjoy the demo. Thank you. 